is being overweight genetic and the role of genetics in obesity. Obesity is a complex condition that is driven by multiple factors. It's not going to be just linked to one thing. And some of these factors are linked to our genetics and others are linked to the environment and in this video we are going to break all of that down in order to understand the specific role of each thing each component on our weight so first we're going to talk about the genetic side of obesity so the genetic basis of obesity is well accounted for in science studies show that anywhere from like 40% to 70% of the differences in our BMI can be explained by genetics. And side note, our BMI is our body mass index and that is what usually the scientific consensus refers to when it comes to saying if a person is obese or not. It's within these terms, meaning BMI above 30 for obesity and BMI above 25 for being overweight. Now, I've said in the past that I don't think that BMI is a great measure of health at all, and you can watch that video about that right here if you're interested, but it is a measure of obesity in most scientific contexts, so that's the one we're gonna use in this video. We actually have specific genes that regulate different aspects of our bodies that can be linked or not to obesity like the way that we store fat or the way that we are hungry or the way that we feel full or the way that our fat cells are organized the way that we burn energy there's just a bunch of factors so now we're going to look at a few of the main contributors to obesity and the first one is the fto gene it is one that is the most studied it is the fat mass and obesity gene. And studies show that individuals that have a certain version of this gene will tend to have higher appetites and will tend to like to eat foods that are higher in calories, higher in fats. And so the impact of this gene is more on appetite regulation and making it pretty hard for these people to lose weight since their appetite is really increased and they tend to overeat much more. Another one of these genes is the MC4R gene and that's the melanocortin 4 receptor gene. So this gene is responsible for regulating hunger and energy balance and so if you have a mutation in this gene that is associated with early obesity so in young children and so the mutations here will affect a receptor that usually Hormones will bind onto it, so a hormone to signal fullness will bind onto it. And in this case, it's dysregulated. So you're not going to get hunger signals and it's really going to be hard to kind of control your energy balance. So obviously if you suffer from that mutation, then you're going to be constantly hungry. So it's gonna be really difficult to control your food intake and therefore to have a healthy weight. Another one we have is the leptin or leptin receptor genes. So leptin is the fullness hormone. It is going to signal to your body that you're not hungry anymore, you have eaten enough. And when you have a mutation on either the LEP gene or its receptor, meaning again, the place where things are going to, the leptin is going to bind to that receptor, then you're not going to be able to feel fullness. So from the genetic components we've just seen, we can see that a lot of the mutations and genetic factors that affect obesity it's going to be more in food intake it's going to be more in increasing hunger and like decreasing fullness and the choice of food as well but it's not just that there are also genes that are directly going to impact like fat cell, fat cell distribution and like your metabolism and this has been shown in genome studies so basically where you study the entire genetic pattern of individuals and here they found in, in one study where they studied the genome of 300,000 people they found that there were 97 different regions of the genome that were associated with BMI and it was for like a wide range of biological processes like we talked about the appetite regulation the hunger fullness aspect also the fat cell functions and also the energy expenditure functions so meaning how much energy 
you can, like how many calories you can burn or not because of your genes. So another crucial aspect of genetic influencing obesity is the fat cell distribution or like fat distribution and how if two people eat exactly the same way but they have different genes they are not going to look the same at all and they can look actually extremely different because of the way that their fat cells are organized and are just located in their bodies for instance you have like the apple shape type of fat storage where it's going to be mainly stored in your belly area so that's going to be the visceral fat around organs and that is the type of fat that is more dangerous and so people like that are going to have large belly areas and then slim like legs and arms and then you have the pear-shaped way to store fat and that's going to be more in the like lower half of your body in your thighs and your legs and then you're going to have a thinner um, belly and that is has poses like less health risk and one of the reasons why we are able to say that genetics play a role in obesity is also thanks to twin studies where we're able to study identical twins so they're going to have a hundred percent the same genes and then you can study identical twins who grew up in the same environment who the ones who grew up in different environments and then compare that to fraternal twins and compare that i mean they share the same genetic similarities as siblings would so 50 percent of their genes and study them and just try to draw conclusions from all of that and some of the key findings of these twin studies are that up to 70 percent of our the variability in our bmis that can be linked to genetics twin studies also show though that the environment has a really big role when it comes to influencing obesity because even if you take identical twins and raise them in different areas then they are not going to end up having the same weight depending on their lifestyle however it's interesting to note that the identical twins that evolve in different environments are going to have closer similarities when it comes to their bmis than fraternal twins who evolve in different environments and studies also really help show the gene slash environment in kind of like the epigenetics portion of it and then i'm going to talk about what that is more later on but basically it's how the environment affects your gene and your genes and we're able to see that because we're able to see that twins who may have the same predisposition genetically to becoming obese if they have different lifestyles one of them is not going to become obese the genes are not going to be activated and then the other one is going to have a lifestyle that's going to activate these like obesity genes that we talked about earlier and so is going to become obese so it's really the mix of both that matters so now that we've briefly touched on it let's get more into epigenetics and that is basically where the genes meet the environment so what epigenetics refers to it is the changes in the expression of a gene based on your lifestyle and your environment and then it's going to do that without altering your dna sequence that's what the gene expression means so it's just the gene expression not the actual gene so an image that you can take is let's say that you have your gene and you have like a little light switch that can turn the gene on or off and basically epigenetics is going to be what will cause you to turn that gene on or off so let's say you have the obesity gene but you live a healthy lifestyle and you exercise and you drink lots of water and you sleep well and you have a nice calm life then you're never going to turn on your light switch for your obesity gene and you're not going to be obese but if you have that same obesity gene and you don't live this kind of healthy lifestyle and you have eating behaviors that are going to turn that gene on then it's going to be expressed and you're gonna have more chances of becoming obese. And this can even happen like during pregnancy, this can happen and then this can be passed down to your children. So I personally find epigenetics completely fascinating. I can make a whole entire video on it. If you're interested, let me know. So now let's talk about genetics versus inherited behaviors. So meaning how your habits that your parents pass down can really impact obesity. And I think that's where a lot of people get the genetic aspect confused like like i've said previously of course there is a genetic component to 
obesity but i think what is even more important is going to be the habits that you pass down to your children and of course if you're in a family where you eat healthy balanced meals and you have a good relationship with food and you have access to healthier food options and you're able to exercise and do all these things then you are more likely to not suffer from obesity and then obviously not to have these genes not to pass them down and so you're much more likely not to become obese and then those are habits that you are going to pass down and you can keep doing that on and on even if you have the obesity gene because you've been like living with this lifestyle your entire life and of course other way around if you have poor eating habits then you have greater chances of becoming obese and then of passing that down to your children and so it can seem like it's something that is genetic because like you're obese and your mom was obese but actually it's because your mom passed down her habits and so now it's very hard for you to get back into healthier eating habits it's super important to understand the role that parents play in their children's predisposition to become obese or not and this is true for the type of food that they eat of course but also for it's also true about their relationship with food because studies show that parents who use food as a reward for their children or who have like really unstructured eating behaviors or who kind of like encourage emotional eating they're more likely to become obese. And then these children are also less likely to cope healthier mechanisms to cope with stress. And so they're gonna turn to food. And then again, it's kind of like a cycle. And then if you add the genetic component on top of it, of course. So please remember that if your parents did not pass down healthy eating habits to you, that is not your fault. And it is not something that you can't change. It is something that you can start learning now and get this get these like better eating habits that you can then pass down to your children and break the cycle and this brings us to how our environment amplifies our genetic predispositions so in our current society where food is widely available and diet culture is rampant it has made it very hard for people who have these genetic predispositions to obesity to not become obese because now you have all these super palatable calorie dense foods and all these super convenient fast food options that aren't the healthiest and then you have socioeconomic factors on top of that so people who can't afford healthier food options people who live in food deserts so they're going to be more likely to get food that is cheaper and that is not as healthy and that is just more convenient especially if they have like larger families they're not going to be getting raw organic veggies for everybody and again that can contribute to this as well and then on top of all this you add diet culture so you have people who are going to have this genetic predisposition to obesity or to storing fat in a certain way and they are going to then be pushed by diet culture to lose the weight and diet culture is going to tell them that this is horrible and bad for their health that they need to do like this and this and this and so these people are going to starve themselves in order to reach ideal weight that is absolutely not a weight that they are healthy at and of course that is going to be even worse because it's going to lower their metabolism drastically and it's going to mess up their hormones so then if we take the example of one woman who has a genetic predisposition to obesity and let's say she has a mutation on her leptin receptor okay so that means that every time that she is going to eat her body is not going to signal to her that she's full so she's going to want to eat a little bit more than others in order to feel satiated and so on top of that her parents didn't teach her good eating habits they only had like fast food available convenient food available they didn't make home cooked meals for her and she was just eating that all the time and she became really used to eating candy and like hamburgers and pizza and she didn't really know what a vegetable was and so then she starts to become overweight and then on top of that she starts to get into diet culture messages telling her that she should be losing weight and she isn't healthy and she should do all of this and so she 
since she doesn't have the healthy eating habits and since she has that gene activated now, it's gonna be much harder for her. So what is she gonna do? She's going to starve herself. She's gonna go on like a 500 calorie diet and that's gonna be extremely dangerous. She's probably gonna crash like lose weight in like a crash diet way, but then her metabolism is going to plummet and she is just going to gain all the weight back and then more. And it's just this terrible, vicious cycle. And now if you take the same person with the same genetic predisposition and now you give that person good eating habits and you free this person from the rampant diet culture and tell her that her body does not need to look like the model that she's seeing everywhere because there are other ways for a body to look healthy, then you can get to an individual that has a healthy body weight. And so what you really need to take away from this video is that of course there is a genetic component to it and that can be very helpful in kind of removing any type of guilt and not being too hard on yourself and understanding that a lot of factors are out of your control. However, there is still around 30 to 60% that you can actually change, that you can actually control. So that's going to be having healthier eating habits. That's going to be removing yourself from diet culture. It's never too late to change these habits. Things are always evolving, always changing. You can absolutely start building healthier habits now. I really recommend checking out videos from my channel so you learn how to do that. So yes, some of it is genetics, and so no, you shouldn't be too hard on yourself. But yes, some of it is environment and within your control and something you can change. And that's what you should really focus on. So that's it for this video. I really hope that you learned something. I hope that you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed making it. So if you did enjoy it, like it, subscribe, and see you on my next one. Bye.